Hi there, it's Peter here again, the guy who hates tomatoes but loves front-end development. In today's video, we will look at Webpack 2. We'll talk about what it is and why is it so useful. I'll also show you a couple examples, couple websites that use Webpack. And then we will start building the Webpack project from scratch. And along the way, you will learn some VS Code tips as well. In this video series, we will be going through the configuration of Webpack. So hopefully you know what Webpack is and why is it so useful. But if not, just briefly talk about why to use it. Webpack is the new JavaScript module bundler. Actually, it's not as new. It's been around for a while, but there's a new version, Webpack 2. And we will be going through the documentation and the configuration of the Webpack 2. Why is it so useful? It lets you import files, function, and classes from another files and use them inside of another files. Okay, so at the end, the Webpack and Webpack Dev Server bundles everything together. So on the page, you're just including one file and all the necessary parts of your JavaScript application or site are bundled together into one JavaScript file. Using Webpack makes your site and application much more scalable and keeps the code better organized than one long file with a lot of functions. If we look at some of the award-winning websites, you'll see that they're using, they're splitting up the code into common and main, meet, Graham as well. We've got three JavaScript bundles also generated using Webpack. And here is another example that splits up the code into styles, scripts, and main bundle.js. So this was a brief overview, and now let's dive into the configuration itself. We'll start the project completely from, from scratch. So I've got a Webpack 101 folder empty, and the first thing we'll need to do, make sure you have npm and a node installed. So if you don't have, if these commands npm hyphen v and node hyphen v doesn't return any values, then you probably don't have node installed. So simply go to node.js.org and download and install it. You shouldn't need to do it on a Mac, but on PC, you probably need to install it. Now we initiate the project by running npm in it. And you can just skip of everything by hitting enter, but I'll set the name to be Webpack Starter and the description Webpack Project Starter, entry point index.js, and we can just hit enter multiple times. This will give us the JSON file. Package JSON is generated for us. If we need to go and edit it, we can edit it manually like this. Now let's install Webpack npm i d to save the dependency Webpack. And this should install it for us into the project itself. If this is the first time you're installing Webpack, you might want to install it globally as well. So npm hyphen g install Webpack. This will install it globally on your computer. And as you can see, it installed the version 1.14, but we want to work with the latest, which is 2.2 at the time of recording. So if we go npm view webpack versions, we should see all the versions, but as you can see, this is this only shows us the first 20 versions, not all of them. So if we use the hyphen hyphen JSON, we should see all the versions available, and we want to work with this 2.2. Okay, so for that, we need to install the specific version Webpack and then we'll simply include the at 2.2.0. That should override the original 1.14. And that's why, that's how we will work with the latest version of Webpack. If you're watching this in the future, the npm install Webpack might work for you and might install the version 2 automatically, but we had to install the specific version. Now you'll see that the dev dependency is saved with the right version of Webpack. Now we will create a couple folders. The first one, as, 
src src for source that's where we will be working in and then we will create a folder dist that will be the destination folder that's where everything will be exported into okay what i also like is to hide the node modules from my view so i only see the files i want to work with you almost never need to touch anything inside of node modules so how we do that excluding it from the view in visual studio code is very easy we will press f1 and search for work space settings so the preference is open workspace settings we'll click on that and then i'll hide the terminal for a moment in the left side you've got all the available options and on the right side you have your own settings okay so if you see there's nothing inside of the workspace settings but that's where we will put the exclude so if i search for exclude snippet inside of the options we can copy this object paste it inside of our settings and we'll add one more option we want to exclude the node underscore modules from our view and when we save that file you'll see the node modules disappearing from the view and we can do the same thing for the vs code so v dot vs code will also hide that configuration file which is essentially linked to this file as well okay if you put this on git or another repository everyone working on the same project will have the same setting inside of the vs code okay so very handy okay so that's how we hide the node modules and now we can create a file inside of the source file we'll call this app.js and now we'll use webpack to minify this file and save it inside of the dist inside of that file we'll simply use console.log and we we'll log in some message hello from app.js okay and now we will bring up the terminal and we will run the webpack on this file we will type in webpack then the url or the the path to the file the entry file and then the destination file which is dist slash app.bundle.js and when we hit enter you see the webpack returning the app.bundle.js and saving the file inside of the dist folder and if we open that file and search for the console log you'll see that our code is included in the bundle now if we run the exactly the same command but with the p flag so hyphen p you will see that the app.bundle.js is minified so the p stands for production and that's where the code the bundle the final bundle is minified now let's do exactly the same and add the watch this will keep the webpack in a watch mode so any changes to the app.js will be automatically saved to the bundle.js okay so this is the watch flag hyphen hyphen watch that will keep webpack running and saving our changes into the bundle.js so this is how you would use it inside of the command line but because webpack has a lot of configuration options it's a good practice to actually create a webpack config which is webpack.config.js inside of the root folder of your project and have your settings here okay so you can easily some simple commands some simple configuration you can use the command line like this but it's a good practice and on most of the bigger projects even smaller projects you want to configure everything inside of the webpack config okay so inside of webpack config the first thing you need to do is to write module.exports equals an empty object and inside of here we will have the options for our build 
So if we want to duplicate exactly the same functionality as we're doing here, we need to firstly specify the entry file, which is a simple path to the entry file, then comma and use output. That will be the destination folder, destination file. We'll create an empty object and specify the file name that will be linked to the dist folder and app.bundle.js. And this is the basic configuration. So all we have here is exactly the same thing we had inside of the command line. We'll save the webpack config. And now inside of the package JSON, we'll write a script. Okay, so we can delete this test script and create our own one, which will be def. And when we run the def command, we want to run Webpack in the development mode and watch true. Okay, so we're setting the watch flag as well. Now we save the package JSON. I'll delete everything in the command line. And instead of running Webpack and the long command, all we have to do is npm run dev. Okay, something's wrong. SRC, okay, as you can see, I've misspelled the SRC inside of the config. SRC. And if we run it again, we should get the exactly the same result as before. Okay, just prove that. We'll delete again, save it, and we should see this inside of the bundle.js. We can go back to the package JSON and create second script. So comma, change the dev to prod. And this webpack config will be in the production mode. So change this to P and remove the watch. Okay, now we can run two commands. One is the dev one. And if we run npm run prod, the file is minified and we are not watching it. So these are two very simple scripts, which lets us minify the file to watch it and to export or output the production code. In the next few videos, we will explore more advanced features of Webpack and how to configure it for React project. And that's it all for today. Hope you've learned something new. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and let me know in the comments what do you think about this series. Until next time, happy coding, bye.